Every once in a while, a car will rise to fame and gain a reputation for being the greatest of all time without actually earning it. It's the friggin' automotive equivalent of the television series Friends. It comes, it does okay enough to stick around until it burns out, and then when it goes away, people remember it as something that's better than it actually was, slowly encapsulating itself in a ball of falsified clout with a cult-like following. What's going on, everybody? I'm Sean from Fitment Industries, and today we're gonna talk about the five most overrated enthusiast cars in the world. And make sure to stick around to the end of the video the last car on this list is surely gonna blow your mind. But before we jump into the Trigger Mobile, please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. We upload every single day and you're not gonna wanna miss any of it. And as always, wheels, tire, suspension, fitmentindustries.com. You know what? I'm just gonna say it. The Mark IV Toyota Supra Turbo is overrated. At a maximum of 320 horsepower at nearly 3,500 pounds, it's slow. And it's not the supercar slayer everybody thinks it is today. It's too heavy, it's too soft, and they really stretched their stats at launch. Toyota claimed numbers that put them in front of their competition at the time, like the FD RX-7 and the 300ZX Twin Turbo. But when it came time to put the Supra up to the task, it fell to the bottom of the pack, both on the track and in the quarter mile. Combine that with the fact that these cars reached an original MSRP of $50,000 in 1996, which is over $80,000 in today's money with inflation. These cars were far from competing with anything in their price bracket, and now that they've exploded in value in the last couple years, the same thing could be said again. Don't get me wrong, the Mark IV Supra is an absolutely gorgeous car that demands attention. It defines the 1990s automotive era and generates massive amounts of nostalgia because of that. And let's not forget the Supra's insane potential, but I'm afraid its potential only reflects the price point and not the true nature of the car itself. And for that reason, I deem it overhyped and overrated. Next! Next up on the chopping block has to be the modern iteration of the Nissan Z. The Nissan 370Z is an absolute embarrassment when you consider that they've been producing this car with the same statistics and build quality since 2009 with nearly zero changes. Put yourself back in time for a minute to an era where automotive manufacturers were building trash interiors with terrible materials and technology coming straight out of the late 2000s recession. <laughs> Is that a good puke face? I don't know. Now imagine if manufacturers decided to make zero changes since then. With the same trash production techniques, confused technology, and low 300 horsepower naturally aspirated drivetrains. Well, that's exactly what Nissan did to the 370Z. When the 370Z launched, it was an amazing platform. It was outperforming the Mustang at the time with a lighter weight chassis and continued to outpower the 4.6 liter Ford modular motor, just like the 350Z did. But soon after the 370s launched, the pony car war started happening. The Camaro came along with 426 horsepower. Mopar released its 425 horsepower SRT8 and Mustang introduced a 412 horsepower 5 liter modular V8 dubbed the Coyote. So what did Nissan do to survive? Nothing. They held their breath and tried to win the race with the tortoise and the hare analogy and kept producing nearly the same car through 2020. Look at this freaking interior people. Look at this information display on the gauge cluster. It's straight out of the 2003 Nissan parts bin. Why are you still using this on a 2020 model? Who thought this was okay? It literally has less pixels in my Game Boy Color. Yeah, that's right, nerds. Don't even get me started on the three dash mounted gauges featuring a digital clock and a voltmeter. It's right next to the friggin' infotainment system that already has a digital clock display in it. Now I know you Z people are screaming at the screen about, well, what if you option the car without the navigation and you don't get that screen? Yeah, what if? You mean you get a CD player straight out of 2006 Pontiac G6 that doesn't even display time? Come on, Nissan. Even with the $45,000 Nismo package, you're looking at competing with rental car spec V6 Mustangs and Camaros. The Nissan 370Z can be a fantastic used sports car are offering plenty of value in its early, heavily depreciated model years. But offering the people a two-door sports car that's 15% better than a 2003 350Z starting at $30,000 for a base model is absolutely offensive, making the 370Z one of the most overrated modern cars on the market right now. Did you smell that? That smell, it's a kind of smelly smell that smells 
like Blue Raspberry Cotton Candy. You're dang straight, I'm talking about the third generation to present Subaru Impreza WRX STI. First off, it's still an Impreza, okay? Just because they took Impreza out of the name doesn't change the fact that you're driving around in a performance trimmed economy car. Get over yourselves in the economy car interior quality that you rode in on. All right, now that I got that off my chest, the cult following behind the WRX and STI is absolutely mind blowing. Subaru people are extremely passionate for many different reasons. And once you're bitten by the bug, it seems like people can't have just one. On one hand, you have a turbocharged manual car with a world renowned all wheel drive system inspired by decades of legitimate rally heritage. They have tons of tuning potential and huge aftermarket availability. But on the other hand, you have a terribly inefficient, unreliable flat four that sounds like Yeti doo doo being violently forced through a hand me down trumpet with compressed air and i literally do not know a single person that has owned a subaru for more than a year that hasn't experienced catastrophic engine or transmission failure naturally aspirated turbocharged stock and modified all of them kaboom combine that with not being that fun to drive outside of off-road and snow applications i don't fully understand the hype or the price point you're looking at twenty thousand dollars for a third gen sti that's heavier and more numb than the previous generation now you're looking at a forty thousand dollar price tag for a 2020 sti it's a smaller engine and it's 300 pounds heavier. It has only 10 more horsepower than the blob eye after 16 years. It's laughable. How are people not angry about this? How does this nameplate still have a cult following? The modern Subaru WRX STI is underdeveloped and overrated. Let's move on. Next up, another turbocharged all wheel drive four cylinder with its name cemented in World Rallycross history. I'm of course talking about the Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution. 10. Mitsubishi's Evolution name has long been known for being a staple in rally-inspired performance cars, competing with sports cars on the street with more than double its engine displacement. This put the Evolution name high on the totem pole of quick and capable cars. But what happens when you manufacture sales start to decline? They start to focus on market trends and spend more time on things like SUVs, crossovers, and alternative fuel technology, resulting in less focus on sport-oriented vehicles. Unfortunately for the Evolution nameplate, Mitsubishi decided to ride on the coattail of the Evo's previous performance and racing success and make it a softer, more comfortable oriented, quieter car based around the Evolution name for its 10th rendition. The Evo 10 was nearly 300 friggin' pounds heavier than the outgoing Evo 9 and it only got a five horsepower bump. The new Evo was laughably more than half a second slower in the quarter mile than the previous generation. So you can imagine just how much it lacked on the track if the power to weight slowed it down that much in a straight line. Most people see the Evo name and think about its rally success and movie famous Evo 8 without the tax and jump on it, thinking that they have a fast car. But not this time. The Evo 10 is like the great value version of Doritos. On paper, it looks similar, but it's very, very, very different. And that's why the Evo 10 is overhyped and overrated. Now, if you haven't been triggered by any of these cars yet, this one may very well get you. So pull up a couple paper towels and get ready to wipe some tears because I'm talking about none other than the R32 Skyline GTR. Now, don't get it twisted. I love the R32 GTR. It's one of the most beautiful vehicles I've ever seen in my life and the rb26 will go down as one of my favorite sounding cars of all time but the way the market is skyrocketing on these cars is straight out of control when the r32 gtr first started legally coming into the u.s they were a very reasonable 15 to twenty thousand dollars all said and done sometimes even cheaper than that now that deal presented a ton of value a twin turbocharged inline six cylinder that delivers incredibly aggressive yet smooth power down to all four wheels through a manual transmission with a proclaimed 276 horsepower Power, which was rather insane for 1989. Even more insane than that is that the number better represented its power at the wheels, but the fun and game stopped there. Somehow the more these cars got imported, the more they go up in value. These days you'll be hard pressed to find a rough example for $20,000 and good examples are up past $30,000 and beyond for well-specced cars with low miles, which is absolutely bonkers. When cars start rising in value for no reason like this, it's a real turnoff for me. Because while the car is nearly perfect, it's not $30,000 worth of car. There are tons of cars out there that will outpower, outperform, outhandle, and outclass the 90s interior of the R32 GTR for the same and less money, dubbing it overrated. Yeah, I said it. Well, that about wraps it up for the top five most overrated vehicles. Be sure to leave a comment about what cars you think are overrated. And even though I've surely offended you, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. We upload every single day, even weekends, and you're not going to want to miss any of the fun. Head over to fitmanindustries.com for all of your wheel, tire, and suspension needs. I'm Sean from Fitment Industries, SeanB.FI on the IG. Peace.